Hi there everyone, my name is Matt Heimlich and welcome to another tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. Today we're going to be covering the use of complex shader networks in the Cycles Render Engine, using my Uber shader as an example. In this multi-part tutorial, I'll cover the parameters of the shader, the creation of the shader from scratch including some basic color map, and finally I'll show you how a single complex shader group can be used to create materials for an entire scene, much more quickly than starting each material from nothing. By the end of this tutorial, you should have the skills necessary to build a number of complex shader nodes suitable for use in a personal material library, or a library shared between artists on a production level. Now, without further delay, let's jump in and familiarize ourselves with the shader. Alright, as you can see here, uh, we have our very simple scene that we'll be using for this tutorial. We have a Suzanne head here. Uh, we also have a background plane. Uh, which is just sort of like a little backdrop, but we won't be using that for most of this tutorial uh, just to speed up the render times in our preview window here. Uh, we've also got two sun lamps, and we are using a background image, which will be included with the dot blend. Here we have the shader itself. I'll pop that open really quick, and you can kind of get a look at what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, now, obviously, that's kind of hard to follow, especially in a short amount of time. But uh, in the second part of this tutorial, we will be creating this entirely from scratch, so you'll be much more familiar with the functions of all of these nodes and how everything works. Now, the Uber shader is designed uh, to not have to be used in the node editor like uh, many other materials would have to be. Uh, it's designed to be used 99% in the properties panel, much like the old uh, Blender internal materials. Uh, the only things you might want to jump in here for is it's a little bit easier to add textures and like uh, normal maps in the node editor than it is over here. Um, but for the most part, we will be doing our work uh, in the properties panel. Now I'm just going to run top to bottom through all these parameters and explain what each one does. Starting here at the top, we have overall opacity, uh, pretty self-explanatory. At one, we have an opaque object. At zero, we have a transparent object. And halfway between, we have a mix of the two. Here we have diffuse color, again, self-explanatory. As we change that, we change the uh, color of the diffuse component of our material. We're going to leave that at white for right now. Here we have the uh, diffuse bump. Right now, it's just using the geometry normal node. Um, because we don't have a bump map plugged in, but if we did, we would simply add an image texture, add a normal map node, and plug it right in there. Uh, or a bump node if you're using a black and white image. Here we have our diffuse weight. Uh, now, we don't have any other weights to weight it against right now, so as we turn the diffuse weight down from 1, it'll move closer and closer to a holdout material, which is pure black. Uh, and as we go back up, it'll give it more diffuse weight. Here we have diffuse roughness, works just like it does in the normal diffuse node. Um, at zero, uh, it is just a uh, plain diffuse surface. As we turn it up, anything above zero, it, use, uh, it uses a Orin Nyar reflectance model. And, uh, you know, anything uh, higher up would be good for things like sand or gravel or uh, diffuse surfaces that scatter light a little bit more than uh, others. So we're going to leave that at zero for right now. Here we have the subsurface scattering options. Uh, I'm going to leave those for the end of this part uh, because we'll have to switch over to CPU mode to use those, and it's a little bit slower. Um, so just while we're going through these, I'm going to use GPU mode, and then at the end we'll come back and take a look at these. Here we have glossy color. Uh, as you can see right now, I change it and really nothing happens. Um, this is because right now we don't have any glossy weight. So if I turn the glossy weight up to 1, uh, you'll be able to see that we are weighing it against the diffuse weight. Uh, but right now, there's not a whole lot to be seen, uh, just because of the nature of the scene it's in. However, if we come in here and we turn the diffuse weight down, you can see that it is indeed just this uh, glossy shader here. And as we turn it up, it uh, weighs them against each other one again, uh, once again. Here we have our glossy roughness. Set that to zero, and you can see we get sharp highlights. As we turn it up, the highlights kind of scatter out a little bit till one. Uh, and at glossy roughness of one, we pretty much just have a diffuse shader there. Uh, so we're going to turn this to maybe 0.05, just uh, for testing purposes. 
Uh, and for now, we're going to turn the diffuse weight down to zero just so we can sort of see better what's going on. Um, here we have the is anisotropic. Now, the cycles node system doesn't currently have booleans or switches, so you can't simply turn things on and off. Uh, so the way I've gotten around this is to use uh, sliders. Uh, zero is off, so at zero we get normal highlights. At one, we get anisotropic highlights. But right now you can see that there isn't, ani uh, there isn't any anisotropy going on. Um, that's because we don't have any anisotropy. So if we turn this up to say 0.8, you can see we get those nice stretched highlights that we would expect from an anisotropic material. Um, and also keep in mind that to use anisotropy, you have to have some roughness to your material. So as we turn this up, uh, you can see it a little bit better what's going on. Here we have anisotropic rotation. Uh, this is between 0 and 1. Um, at 0, it isn't rotated at all. At 0.25, it's rotated 90 degrees. At 0.5, it's rotated 180 degrees, and so on and so forth. 0.75 at 270, and uh, 360 degrees at 1. Uh, so we're going to leave that at 0 for right now. Here we have the Fresnel coefficient. Um, and turning this down anything uh, other than 1 will use Fresnel reflections, which means that they will be uh, pushed further and further towards the um, faces that are perpendicular to the camera as you turn it down. So right now we're at 1 all the reflections are visible. As we turn it down to 0.8, for now we're going to turn anisotropy off as well. Uh, you can see on facing uh, on, on faces facing the camera, reflections are a little bit lower. And as we keep going down, let's say to 0.2, you can see they're pushed even further towards the edge. And at zero, we pretty much just have a holdout material. So I'm going to turn that back up to one for full reflections. Here we have uh, the tangent input. Um, here you can use uh, our black and white image, and I believe you can use a colored image as well to control the anisotropic tangents of your material. Um, and uh, we will be going into that in the part of the tutorial where we actually use this material to build a scene. Um, but for now, I'm going to skip over that. Here we have refraction transparency. Uh, the way this material is set up that is that you have the option to either use refraction and glossy material to get a glass type material uh, where they're de decoupled from one another or um, we have an option to turn on just the glass material if you want everything uh, coupled together. Um, so starting here we're going to set the glossy color back to white uh, and we're also going to change the Fresnel coefficient to about 0.35 which I have found um, is uh, about what we would use for a glass material. So here we're going to turn refraction transparency up to 1. And as you can see, we get our nice glass material here. Um, we're also going to turn the roughness down to 0 for the reflections. There we go. You can see that we have a uh, glass material here. Here we have our refraction color. This is what we would use to change the color of the glass. You can change it to a green glass, yellow glass, red glass, uh, pretty self-explanatory again. Here we have our bump where we, that uh, we could use just for the refraction material. Here we have our refraction roughness, which we would use if we wanted like a frosted glass. So we could turn this up to 0.35 and we could turn the reflection roughness to 0.35 as well and we have a, a kind of a frosted glass material. Uh, we're going to turn those back to zero for now. Here we control the index of reflect, uh, refraction. Default is 1.55, which is about what you would use for uh, high quality glass. Um, and here we have another value called transmittance. Now this is something that I've added to the material myself. Um, and this is part of the material so that uh, you can simulate glasses or other refractive materials that um, absorb and change the color of light as it gets deeper and deeper into the material. Um, for this, we're going to actually turn that plane back on so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. As you can see, we have our glass material. Um, now we are going to change our transmittance color to, uh, let's say, green. And as I do that, you can see that as... Uh, 
in these places of the object where it's thicker, we get this green material as um, uh, light rays go deeper and deeper in. You can change the depth at which this, uh, at which this uh, effect occurs with the transmit depth. At point 0.1, you can see uh, it starts very shallow, so you can even get it in the ears, and in the, in the head it's almost entirely green. We can go up to 2, where it's a very faint effect, and it only happens in the deepest parts of this material. Um, this is a very handy tool to have, especially for things like water, where in deep bodies of water it's very dark blue, but as it gets shallower and shallower, it's, it's almost a clear color. Okay. Here we have the option, as I said earlier, to change to just the glass shader. Um, if you have these uh, um, parameters uh, set correctly, um, as in the glossy roughness is matched to the refraction roughness, and the uh, index of refraction is uh, 1.55, when you turn this on, you shouldn't see um, really any change at all. It's, it's more of just an aesthetic, or um, it's more just a technical thing for someone who doesn't want to have to go back and forth and change them. Um, but I did leave the refraction option in there for someone who might want a little bit more control. So if we turn that to 1, you can see that that changes it to a glass material. Um, and it pretty much just is the same exact thing. When you use the glass shader, it uses all of the parameters from uh, the refraction inputs here. So refraction transparency, if I turn that down, it changes the transparency of the glass as well. Refraction color, that will change the color of the glass, and uh, as well, the glass material does the uh, Beer's Law absorption equation. Um, so I'm going to turn that back off for now. Here we have a couple of other um, really neat options for uh, your scene here. Um, as you can see, we have a glass material, but the shadows that are coming through it are more or less just opaque shadows. Um, now, obviously, for glass, this isn't correct, but if we were to turn on caustics, we'd be waiting just days and days and days just to see an effect of the light scattering through the glass. So, here we have an option to use fake shadow. So, if I'm going to turn that to one here, you can see that it changes the color of the shadow here. Um, now, you can use this without the glass or refraction shaders even to just control the color of whatever shadow you want. Um, but used alongside glass, you can take it and match it to the color of the glass. We'll turn it down just a little bit so you can actually see what's coming through. Uh, and then here as well, we can turn on fake caustics. So if I, as I turn this up, you'll kind of see what it does. It gives you this caustic effect as if there's light being refracted and focused by the glass, um, but without any additional waiting time. So you get this effect more or less for free um, with this node setup, which is very, very handy for animations where people are expecting to see some kind of refraction effect, but um, you know most people aren't really familiar with caustic, so um, it doesn't have to be exact. And uh, in the part two, we'll explain how this works, um, but it's a very, very handy effect to have, especially for you know when you're animating and you can't wait forever for real caustics uh, for each frame. Um, so. Down here we have the option, we're going to turn uh, use fake shadow off right now. Uh, here we have the option to uh, make our object an emitter, so we'll just turn use emission to 1. And uh, here we can change the emission color, so we can have it emit some red light. And we can have the emission strength, and we can turn that up or down, or you know, however you want to use it. Uh, for right now we're going to turn that to 0. Um, here is a kind of a utility part of the shader, um, and this is called Use Matte. Now what this will do is, um, as I turn it up, it will actually matte out the object, but not affect any of the shadows or refractions or anything like that. Um, it won't affect secondary rays, so um, you know, things that reflect it will see what the shader is aside, as if you had this turned off. Um, and you can pick any color you want. Now this is um, helpful in a lot of cases for post-processing. Uh, post if you were to pull it into uh, another program, you could um, you know, replace this with whatever you'd like. Um, as I said, it's more of a utility shader, but uh, I thought it would be nice to have as well. Um, here we can control the alpha of just the mat. So as we turn that down to zero, you can see the material goes away, and we're left with just the shadow. Uh, 
All right, so that is the Uber Shader in a nutshell. Um, now I'll go and uh, jump into this subsurface scattering as well. So here I will just jump over to CPU mode. I'm gonna turn use mat off. I'm going to turn down the refra uh, refraction transparency. I'm gonna turn down the glossy weight. And I'm gonna turn up the diffuse weight. So here we have this uh, just white material. Um, and here I'm just going to turn the subsurface scattering weight up to 1. As you can see it's set to this green and right now as the light comes in it's kind of scattering through in this green color. Here you control the radius of the red, green, and blue. I have it set to 1 point, uh, 0.4 and 0.15. Uh, I find that this gives a really good wax effect um, to the material. Uh, if I turn off these sun lamps you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. Maybe I'll leave one on just for light to be more light to scatter through. Um, as I said, this does take quite a bit of time to render. I'm going to turn off this backplane here just to speed things up. We'll let that render for a minute. As you can see, um, it's uh, added on top of the diffuse shader, so uh, this is very handy to use for simple things like um, you know leaves have a certain amount of subsurface scattering or a wax candle or um, you know, really anything where light is bouncing, uh, bouncing around a little bit below the surface. Uh, I wouldn't do skin with just this, uh, and in fact I do have a separate skin shader with, for which there will be a tutorial coming up, um, but uh, this is very handy because a lot of materials do have this subsurface effect. Um, anything can be used in conjunction with this, so if I turn the glossy weight up, and uh, turn the roughness up a little bit, and turn the Fresnel coefficient to a slightly higher number, you can see that we get these glossy reflections on top of the subsurface scattering. Um, and uh, if you wanted to, it could be used alongside the refraction and uh, the glass material as well, but um, you know, at that point uh, you're not going to get a very visually pleasing material, and I can't think of any real-world materials that would use anything like that. So we'll turn that down. You can see just the subsurface and uh, glossy materials. As I rotate around, you can get it from different angles. Um, and as I said, this is a, a very good uh, setup for something like wax. Um, you can change the parameters and even get something like marble out of it if you wanted to. Uh, and again, I'll be showing more uh, specific examples of how to use this once we get into the third part of this tutorial. Uh, so. Yeah, that is the Uber shader. Um, in the next part of the tutorial, we will pop open the shader here, and I will show you how to recreate it from scratch. So I hope you've enjoyed part one of this tutorial, and I will see you in the next part.